Sports tape, scarves, chunky knuckles. What the hell was going on here? This was Sonic Boom, a spin-off franchise where Sonic and friends lived in a tropical jungle for whatever reason. I don't need to remind anyone how that turned out, but against all odds, its TV show went on to become a fandom staple. It's better than it has any right to be. Sonic Boom the TV series is a Twitter meme generator that lasted from 2014 to 2017. We followed Team Sonic battling Eggman and their everyday inconveniences. At face value, it seems like a generic comedy that piggybacks off the whole self-aware trend. Yet, it's actually incredible. Last year, I did a retrospective on Sonic X. I never planned on covering Sonic Boom, but since your guys' support has been so amazing, I am back to deliver. Let's crack open this Eggman and discover why Sonic Boom is a comedic masterpiece. Let's get down to business. Sonic Boom is a slice of life action comedy. We follow best friends Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and newcomer Styx. When they're not fighting Eggman's robots, they hang out or do wacky errands. Let's go over the main five. First, there's Tails, the brainy dork. He builds inventions and explains to Technobabble. For years, it's been theorized that a mirror dimension exists parallel to our own. Of course we do, but a little exposition never hurt anybody. But he's also impaired by certain social cues. Unlike his mainline series counterpart, Boomtails is quite self-sufficient in battle. Then there's Knuckles, the dumb muscles type. He goes to gym frequently, but skips out on leg day. Who says I skip leg day? He's often full of himself, but also oblivious to many of the witty insults. Hey, Knox, you're famous! Cool! Who's the doofus with the trash can on his head? Then there's Amy, the organized and perfectionist type. She's level-headed and keeps the group morally grounded. She, low-key, has a crush on Sonic, but still respects his personal space. Mess with her, and you're in for a world of pain. The fourth member is Styx the Badger, a crazed conspiracy nut. But you will never obliterate Styx, because Styx is unobliter- unob- unobliterate me! He can't kill me. Don't pay attention, attention to her. her. She's, She's actually, actually very nice. nice. She counterbalances the team's ego with her cynicism and wild behavior. Styx is an original character created specifically for Sonic Boom. Finally, there's Sonic. He's a sarcastic egomaniac, but has a heart for saving people. He's best pals with Knuckles and Tails. Unlike his one-note betrayal in the mainline games, Boom Sonic is wisecracking yet flawed. This is also Roger Craig Smith's best performance. I am Ezio. I am Batman. I am Chris Redfield. Sorry, as Sonic. You're a horrible roommate and nobody in this house likes you. A few months ago, Roger Craig Smith stepped down from voicing Sonic after 11 years of work. I used to criticize his earlier work for being forced and cringy, but in retrospect, it wasn't entirely his fault. Between Sonic Colors and Now, the writing in those games tried so hard to be funny, they came off as desperate. Smith's only direction was to be cool and cocky. That worked for lines like, No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! So what's the problem? He spoke with that same confident cadence all, all the time, time, even in scenes that needed a more solemn performance. I'm supposed to be the fastest, but I was too slow to save my buddy. By then, Sonic became annoying and stiff. What? Shut up! Also, Lost World and Forces failed at getting me emotionally invested in his character, assuming he had one to begin with. In Sonic Boom, Smith's performance is far more dynamic. Boom Sonic is prone to being petty, irritated, scared, and snapping at others. You know what I think is compassionate? Saving the village from Eggman, like every week. But do I get any props for that? No! <gasps> I quit heroing! He's no longer a one-dimensional joke dispenser. He acts like an actual guy. Whenever Sonic's in a sour mood, I hear Smith having a blast in the booth. His line delivery is honestly some of the best stuff on the show. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. People are trying to sleep! I'm sad Roger Craig Smith stepped down. He's a talented guy, and the mainline games didn't do him justice. Ugh, like I was saying. The voice acting is great across the board. The whole cast conveys a wide range of emotion and wit. They share great chemistry, and they fully commit to the more absurd moments. But Mike Pollock as Eggman? My god, he steals the show. There's a reason he's still doing Eggman after 18 years of service. 
Dr. Eggman aspires to be a supreme villain, but he's more like an irritated frenemy to Team Sonic. He's similar to Dr. Doofenshmirtz, an evil genius who can create amazing stuff, but Ego gets the best of him. His ultimate goal is building a theme park over the village, but Team Sonic always stops him. In his free time, he struggles with mundane inconveniences and village bureaucracy. Despite him having no reason to oblige, he still obeys city laws. Well, sometimes. A big chunk of the comedy pairs the fantastical characters with mundane situations. For example, Eggman contends with homeowner association meetings, bad mail service, and having to crash at Sonic's home. Sonic, you have to help me! Why? Because if you don't, I'm truly stuck living with you until I build a new island fortress. Let's roll. The everyday life issues lead to the best plots. In one episode, Eggman takes an SAT exam in order to get a PhD in evil doing. <laughs> he stresses all over the test and almost flunks, but his cheating ironically earns him a degree. It's so absurd, the show just runs with it. My favorite episodes are the ones where Team Sonic deals with ordinary conflicts, but with a twist. Evil boy bands, a road trip, or a New Year's party where Eggman and Sonic compete in slow motion. It lends a certain groundedness to an otherwise wacky setting. Sounds like the writers are just phoning it in, but just in case, we better go check it out. But Sonic Boom's biggest strength is the humor. The show employs a great mixture of witty comments, slapstick, cutaway gags, and self-awareness. Capable is my middle name. I thought your middle name was The. The writing is tight and very well paced. Even if a few gags don't land, it moves fast enough that it doesn't drag. The show's secret weapon is its self-awareness. I'll watch it for you. People have been complaining that I don't guard enough rare stones. Sonic Boom gracefully pokes fun at not only itself, but the Sonic fandom at large. If you ever saw any clip from the show, it's most likely these moments. Is that Tomato Potamus too? That's the best one in the entire series! Tomato Potamus never worked in 3D. They never should have changed the color of Tomato Potamus's legs. Just to be on the safe side, maybe we should start an internet petition. Even if you're not a Sonic fan, the show's earnest and playful fourth wall breaks will put a smile on your face. Okay, I'm trying something new for the YouTube algorithm. I have a question for you, my loyal viewer. What is your favorite episode from Sonic Boom? If you leave your answer below, it'll greatly boost my engagement. I'll start. My favorite episode is the Stephen King Misery parody, where a crazed fan takes Sonic hostage and reads some bad fanfiction. But, you know, less scary. Ooh, Son Amy! <laughs> Spicy! Yeah, I don't really care for that, but it seems to be obligatory in the genre. <laughs> this type of humor is the main reason I watch the show. Let's discuss the production design. Sonic Boom is the first Sonic cartoon to be entirely animated in 3D. For the franchise's first attempt, it exceeds. The sets are detailed and complement the characters and the action. The lighting and model work are pretty on point. For the supporting characters, they follow the same design principles as Team Sonic. Big eyes, exaggerated hands, and noodle limbs. They're very expressive and blend in perfectly with the main cast. For the main four, Team Sonic's redesigns were off-putting when I first saw them. But nowadays, I appreciate the varied body proportions and added clothing items. Those give the teams distinct silhouettes. The sports tape is still weird but I got used to it. However, the animation leaves a lot to be desired. In the first season, the animation is as stiff as a brick. When a character moves their joints, they just snap into place. It's quite robotic. There's no drag or easing between the animation keyframes, so almost every movement looks lifeless. Season 2 is a whole different story. The animation is much more expressive and fluid. Hair features like hedgehog quills and echidna spines sway naturally. They switched animation studios between seasons, so the upgrade is apparent. But I did find some minor production goofs. Like in Tails' Crush, the skybox is kind of embarrassing. The camera orbits around him 90 degrees, but the skybox stays in place. It's literally just one texture. Uh, actually, it's a really low-res JPEG. What's a, J what's a JPEG? There's a few times the skybox moves like it's attached to a GoPro. It doesn't look good. Some of you might ask, how does this show tie in with the Boom Games? Other than the characters and some ideas, like the energy lassos, the TV show is completely separate from the games. That's for the best. Speaking from experience, Rise of Lyric is a rushed mess. I played the 3DS demo for Shattered Crystal once, and it was painfully mediocre. You weren't missing anything. Some of you may not know this, but Sonic Boom is also an action show. Let's talk about the action scenes and why they're a mixed bag. In the first season, there's at least one set piece of Team Sonic clearing out Eggman's robots. It's not terrible, per se. The issue is a lack of fight variety. Knuckles uses his fists, Amy whacks her hammer, Sticks throws boomerangs, Tails uses inventions, and Sonic spin dashes. 
They beat Eggman through the same means most of the time. Like, for God's sake, when they use the same solution 70% of the time, I just zone out. It doesn't help that Eggman recycles the same 3 or 4 boss robots every fight. Even the characters acknowledge this repetition. This old bot again? Why can't you build something new? You know how much it costs to design and build new robots every week? Season 2 fixes this issue by throwing in more varied obstacles. They use powers in inventive ways. Like, the set pieces get more elaborate and more exciting. Oh yeah, Shadow's here for like, three episodes, being an edgy prick. Your shoddy craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehog kind. You shall perish. And he just leaves. There are some really cool race car sequences, and I had a great time with the robotic sky arc. Season 2 is definitely my favorite season. It has the best humor, action, and plots. Well, everything except the music. The music in this show isn't particularly memorable. It's either generic symphony junk or copyright free renditions of already popular songs. <laughs> Season 2 introduces aggressive rock tunes, but those are rare. The American intro has its generic battle track. You could replace it with any Crush 40 song, and it'd fit just as well. You're strong, you can fly. Before we wrap up, let's hand out some prizes. Firstly, Meme Paradise. This series is a goldmine of fourth wall breaks. We interrupt this public domain music for some important exposition. It might not be as classy as Chowder or Gumball, but I won't forget these moments anytime soon. And lastly, Saving Grace. The Sonic Boom franchise had a lot riding against it. The games failed, yet the show came out on top. It's the literal definition of Saving Grace. Sonic Boom the TV series is an anomaly. It started off as a pretty standard comedy, but grew as one of the most charming things I've seen in a while. I love the voice cast, the more elaborate action bits, and the meta humor. If you're one of those people who only know the show through the memes, I highly recommend you watch the episodes. It really is such an amazing show. Knuckles, what do you have to say? Meme! Approved! Anarchy, baby! Woo! Thank you for watching. If this video reaches 100 likes, I'll cover another Sonic show. I'm in the process of moving right now, so my schedule's pretty tight. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. No hedgehogs were harmed in the making of this video.